Hey, good morning. Uh, this is Pastor Harvey Beck at Lester Memorial Methodist Church. We're glad you're joining us on this Wednesday devotion. Today's Wednesday, September the 18th, 2024. Um, I wanted to share with you, first off, uh, we are part of the Global Methodist Church. Most of you probably listening to this know that, but this coming week on Friday, we'll begin the very first general conference that will be in Costa Rica. So people from all over the world, but the Global Methodist Church will be coming together. They've created a prayer prayer guide for 12 days. It started actually on Monday, and I'm going to read to you on Monday, September the 16th. I want to read the scripture to you in the prayer. I just thought it was good, and especially in light of all the 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 fact that we're going to have the political races that are occurring and we'll be voting for a new president coming up in November. So uh, I wanted to share that prayer with you. Our church, uh, Melanie Thomas, who is our administrative assistant here at church, she's going to be sending this out, the scripture for the day and the prayer for the day to our our congregation so they can enter into that prayer, which will be praying for the whole world of the Global Methodist Church. So here it is. This was on Monday, September the 16th, 2024. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. First Chronicles 1624. Declare his glory among the nations and his marvelous deeds among all peoples. Here's the prayer, and it goes like this. Lord God, these words of Scripture remind us of the theme of our general conference. So the world will know. That's the theme that we're, we're having for our first general conference. So the world will know. As we prepare to gather, keep our eyes fixed upon that ultimate purpose. Pour out your Holy Spirit on the Global Methodist Church in order that people from every tribe and tongue and nation will cry out, Hallowed be thy name, and will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. That prayer and that scripture, it was led by Dr. Steve Siemens uh, from Kentucky. He was one of my professors I had at Asbury. So just encourage you to be praying for the General Conference. Um, this coming Friday, which will be the first day of the General Conference, I also was asked to do the devotion at our here at Lester Memorial. We have a, uh, for the Aniana High School students, we have uh, and the football players, the band, cheerleaders, whoever wants to come. And so we usually will have 80 students or so that will be here. I'll share a devotion. I was asked to do it, so it will be this Friday. When I was asked to do it, I immediately thought of David and Goliath. We know the story from childhood. I'm going to paraphrase part of it, but several years ago when I came here, in fact, I guess it was five years ago, a man walked in my office, and he brought me a cardboard box, and it had this leather sling and he had he gave me five rocks which is exactly what david picked out in the that's three of them there's another one and one's in the pouch so i may sunday get up and just sling this thing around and around and see if i can hit somebody in the head like david did with goliath but i'm going to share that story with the students and then share with them something that david said i'm going to share it with you in this devotion and i may end up preaching on this on sunday but um, I keep these five stones on my desk and this sling. They've been here for five years. They sit right on the corner of my desk. So I see it. I don't always think about it every day, but um, it is a reminder, and I'm saying this to all of us, we all have giants in our lives or things that come against us that uh, we need God to help us through. And so I just remind you a little bit about the story that uh, David was probably, we don't know his exact age, uh, he could have been 12 years old. I know sometimes it gets said that he was 12. We're really not told exactly. He could have been 12. He could have been 13, 14, 15. But we know by the age that it that his brothers were that he had to be a teenager or 11, 12, 13, 14 years old. So just FYI, he was young. He was out keeping the shepherds while the Philistines came against Israel. The battle lines were drawn. David's still back here. Now, he's already been anointed by Samuel the prophet. If you read in 1 Samuel, he's already been chosen as the anointed one. The older brothers and the dad sort of dismissed it. It's like he's the youngest. So there were eight other brothers. So probably three of those brothers, I believe it tells us in there, 
were already on the battle line. And uh, so I got to wondering how accurate a sling really is. And you may already know this, but I was surprised to find out that this sling and this rock, if if you practice with it, you can get pretty darn good with it. And uh, David had already proven that by taking care of lion and the wolf that came against the sheep that he was tending. And so I looked up some details. Yes, slings were considered deadly and accurate weapons of warfare in ancient times. Ancient sources say that slings were accurate against small targets, small targets up to 270 yards away. Uh, so you could hit a particular object. And more than likely when David faced Goliath, he was a little bit closer than that. We really don't know exactly for sure. Uh, we do know that slings were used by armies in the Egyptians, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans. So they did use a sling. Slings were easy to make and were the weapon of choice for shepherds defending their animals, even over swords or a spear. Because the time the lion gets that close, you're in close battle. You can't use the sling, but you could use that sling at a distance when you saw them off. And again, if you practice with it, and again, you've got ammunition laying around on the ground most of the time, hopefully, you can keep some in your pocket, is what David did. And so they say it's very accurate. I've never actually tried it, but the man who gave me this set has, and he's taught other students when he was helping with the Boy Scouts, and he said it's amazing how accurate you can really do it after you get it to go in and practice for a while. Another interesting thing about the story is that Goliath had, had taunted the people of Israel and mocked them cursed their God for 40 days. So this is the 41st day that David, whom the, the father had asked for him to bring refreshments and stuff for the people on the line. So he gets there as a young man, and you know there they are, all the armies, and he begins to hear uh, the statements that uh, Goliath's making. And I want to read this portion of you. This is in 1 Samuel 17. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. And David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied and defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you, and I'm going to take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God of Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle, the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands." So I'm going to share that one scripture, not the whole thing, but I'm going to give this to the students that you may be facing giants and you listening may be facing giants. Just remember whose you are and who you belong to. And so I'm going to share this scripture with the students that, um, that it does matter that we serve the Lord our God. So whatever the battle is or whatever you're going through, just remember that the battle belongs to the Lord. So we can learn from this young man that even though his brothers and all the others were afraid to go take care of Goliath, he just said, I'm here in the name of the Lord God Almighty. So we can face a lot in life, and we should face everything we face in life with the fact that we can quote, uh, you come to me with spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. And so uh, we claim that, and I hope you can claim that today in whatever you're going through. Jesus is Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Love you. Have a golden day.